It's the crack of dawn on the island of Vinyl Haven, 19 kilometers off the coast of central Maine. It's the beginning of the workday for the island's many lobstermen, each one distinguishable by the color-coded buoys that dot the harbor. Hi, Walt. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us in your boat. Walt Day is one of the island's most seasoned lobstermen. He's been fishing lobster for almost 55 years. For eight months of the year, from April to December, he's out at sea on his 11-meter boat, Night Moves. Today, he motors more than seven kilometers off the mainland to check his traps. Okay. Day comes from a long line of lobstermen. My dad used to go from, actually, I think this boat right here was, was like my dad's boat that he went out to the big boat in. So was it always in your blood to be yeah. a lobster? How did you know? It just, I loved everything about it. Day got his lobster fishing license at the age of 10 and his first boat at 14. Lobstering tends to pass from generation to generation. Your grandfather usually took you first when you was really too small to do anything. And then by the time he had you trained up enough so you could actually help aboard the boat, then you'd switch and go with your dad. And then when your dad figured you learned enough and was capable enough, then you got a boat of your own. For centuries, communities like those on the island of Vinyl Haven have relied on lobster for survival. Lobster-related businesses account for roughly half of the island's economy. Lonnie Morton owns the Harbor Gawker, a restaurant down the road from the fishermen's boats. How important is sort of lobster to your business? Well, lobster is very important. That's why most of the people come to the island. They expect to get lobster rolls and uh, lobster dinners and you name it, lobster is king. To protect that vital resource, Day and other lobstermen abide by a strict set of conservation rules. They use a gauge to measure the size of each lobster. Lobsters longer than five inches from eye socket to tail can't be kept. Neither can those measuring less than three and a quarter inches. Pregnant lobsters also have to be spared. What happens if you were to keep one that was and had eggs. Eggs, it probably cost me about $250 if I got caught with it. That's the fine. It's not worth it. And that's on the first one after that, the price goes up. Egg-bearing lobsters have to be marked with a V-shaped notch on their second to right flipper. See, now we v notch that one so that everybody else will know, even if she hatches them eggs, they know that she's a breeding female. So even if it has the V but no eggs, nobody can keep it. Yeah. We'll put her back and hopefully she'll have her babies and about seven years from now, maybe I'll catch one of her offspring. Only about 3% of Walt's catch that day are so-called keepers. The rest have to be tossed back into the ocean. It's all about maintaining the fishery. And the fishery is booming. The state had its biggest four-year haul in history. Initially, the market wasn't prepared for the glut and prices fell as a consequence, threatening the livelihood of many lobstermen. But then demand from China started to take off. American lobster exports to China have jumped from $2.1 million in 2009 to $90.5 million in 2014. Emily Lane is the administrative manager at the Vinyl Haven Fishermen's Co-op. She helps market Maine lobsters to China. The Chinese have a, an insatiable appetite for, for Maine lobster, and I think that uh, that has, has really contributed to um, more of, of uh, demand and stability in the marketplace. And that has helped make lobstering a very lucrative business if you work hard. Some guys around here that probably gross a half a million dollars a year before taxes. But 312 kilometers south of Vinyl Haven in New Bedford, Massachusetts, the livelihood of lobstermen is under threat. There, the lobster population isn't doing so well. I mean, I hate to use the cliche, but it's climate change. Bob Glenn, the chief lobster biologist for the state of Massachusetts, says rising water temperatures are hurting the lobsters. So over the last 50 years, we've seen about a half a degree increase in, in water temperature, which if you're trying to compare that to air temperature, it seems pretty minor. Uh, but what that, for, for marine animals or especially, there's, they tend to have th temperature thresholds. And for lobsters, it's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, when the water temperature exceeds that for a prolonged period of time, it really adds to their physiological stress. 
Bob says the water exceeds 68 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly 120 days a year. That is three times the amount it did in the 1990s. And that can lead to increased rates of disease, a decline in their immune systems and respiratory problems. But lobstermen in the area like Jarrett Drake are skeptical. They don't believe climate change is at play. I've been fishing out of here for the last 15 years. And in the 90s, I had to break through ice getting out. The last two years, I had to break through ice. So yeah, it was warm for a while, you know. It seemed, seemed warm, especially to us. But again, it's cyclical. Everything runs in cycles, you know. He says his catch is at an all-time high. In 2010, 11 was pretty good, but really in 2013, it was like back to 90s levels for us, you know, um, in area two. And then 14 was even better, and then this year, in 2015, was even better than that. It just keeps getting better and better. But Glenn says that's because there are roughly half the number of lobstermen fishing in the area as compared to the 90s when Massachusetts lobsters were plentiful. There's far less competition, so the remaining guys who are fishing are able to catch a, a higher proportion of, of the lobsters that are available than what they used to. So as a result of that, they've maintained their catch rates. But the overall catch in the area is down. In 2013, it was one-fifth of what it was in the late 90s. Glenn is hoping for the best, but has serious concerns about the long-term health of the lobsters. I don't think lobsters will become completely extinct in southern New England, but I think what it, it'll the the population will be a, a small fraction of what it once was, and, and it may be very difficult to get back to those historic levels. The only thing that, that we can do is try to preserve the, the spawning stock, which is the basically the breeders, um, and then hope for positive environmental conditions. The water in the Bay of Maine is also warming, which suggests lobstermen there could suffer the same fate as those in Massachusetts. That would have a huge impact on the economy of communities like Vinyl Haven. But Day doesn't seem too worried. After five decades working in the business, he says he's seen it go through many ups and downs. As my dad always said, you go do the work, you haul the traps, don't worry about the money. The money will take care of itself if you do the work. And it's always seemed to proven out that way that it, that it does. Only time will tell whether Maine lobsters can survive what could be their greatest challenge ever.